Hello, I'm Dan Schmeler with First Section. First Section is an authentic-minded mounted artillery unit which focuses on the equine aspects of the war, both north and south. Working hand-in-hand -hand with the Liberty Rifles, First Section strives to accurately portray Civil War artillery and the Teamsters as they appeared during the war. This series of videos will cover topics like the harnessing of a team, loading and firing properly, and maneuvering on the field, all according to the Light Artillery Tactics Manual. Today we're going to cover harnessing a team according to the manual, Field Artillery Tactics by Hunt, Barry, and French. Moving the thousands of pieces of rolling stock on both sides of the war fell on the backs of millions of horses. In Field Artillery Tactics, in the second article, Organization and Equipment of Field Batteries, it states that during peacetime, as the movements are executed with empty ammunition chests, the number of horses, and specifically in the six-pound batteries, may be limited to four for each carriage. During times of war, it states, as the ammunition and stores must be transported, the carriage requires six horses each. While this is specifically stated and preferred that the batteries use six horses per carriage, it is at times documented that both the Union and Confederate batteries used four horses per carriage. Let's take a look at a set of harness and the individual pieces that make it up. According to Article 7, the driver, a pair of horses properly harnessed should be paraded, the different parts of the harness indicated, and their uses explained to the men individually. Driver's saddle, collar, hames, traces, crupper, breeching, valise saddle, valise, whip, leg guard. Now that we know the individual pieces of the harness, let's take a look at how all of this is stored. Article 7 continues by saying, the harness in its storeroom or in the stable is placed on its peg, the pommel of the saddle next to the heel post, the breeching hangs over the cantle, the breast strap and the hames over the pommel, the leg guard under the saddle of the near horse, the collars hang over the cantles, each blanket covers its own saddle, the harness bridle, properly secured, hangs on its peg, which should be short and places under that of the harness, the hole covered by the harness sack, properly secured. Well, this is how the manual prescribed for the harness to be stored while in garrison, while in the field, it was commonly stored over the limber pole. In winter quarters, it was prescribed that racks be constructed for the storage of the harness. Now I'm going to demonstrate harnessing a horse according to the manual. Two harness, 286. The instructor causes the harness sacks to be taken off, places each man at the heel post between his horses and commands harness. At the command harness, each wheel driver puts on and buckles the collar of his off horse or passes it buckled carefully over the horse's head, arranges and puts on the saddle blanket, then places himself on the left of the saddle. 2. He seizes the pommel with the left and the cantle with the right hand, slips it off the peg, approaches the near side of the horse, and adjusts the saddle in its proper position, taking care that the blanket does not get deranged nor creased. 3. He passes to the front of the horse, pulls the breast strap carefully over his head, adjusts the hames to the collar, connects the lower part of the branches, and tightens the hame strap. 4. He passes to the near side of the horse, disengages the breeching, then, moving to the rear, draws it over the horse's haunches, arranges the crupper and the loin strap. 5. He sees that the harness is properly arranged, tightens and buckles the girth, and buckles the belly band. 6. At this command, the driver puts his leg guard on over the right leg, plate outwards, bridles the horse, looses the check rein of the off horse, and faces towards them seizes the reins of the near one with his right and the off horse with his left hand near the bit, backs them down into the gangway, facing them toward the door, and takes the position prescribed for lead to the exercise ground. And with that, the team is harnessed and ready to hitch.
Now let's take a look at how the team is unharnessed at the end of instruction or going into bivouac. To unharness the horses having been returned to their stalls or the pickets, the off horse is secured by the means of the check rein. The instructor then commands, unharness. Two, he unbuckles and frees the crupper, slips the breeching over the rump and places it over the cantle of the saddle, resting the middle of it on the seat. Three, he goes to the front, draws the breast straps well forward through their links, loosens the hame straps at the top, disconnects the branches at the bottom, passes the breast strap over the horse's head, laying it and the hames over the pommel of the saddle. Four, he loosens the belly band and then the girth, strips off the saddle, places it properly on his peg, and covers it with a blanket. Five. He removes and puts up the collar and secures the horse by his halter. The off horse is unharnessed in the same manner and is by the same commands. The instruction I've just demonstrated was similar to an infantryman loading a nine times in that it was taught by the numbers. However, once mastered, it was simply executed. After the drivers have learned to execute properly each motion of harnessing and unharnessing, which should be done under the eye of the instructor or non-commissioned officer or well-instructed driver, they should be made to execute the movements in two motions. Afterwards, at the simple command, harness, they will harness both horses of their pairs, taking care to follow the direction in the order laid down in the different numbers. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to properly harness a team according to the Field Artillery Tactics Manual. Thanks for watching and see you in the field. Yeah.